We are so framed to something negative when it comes to hypnosis. He um, helped him with hypnosis to get rid of um, the sneezes. Hypnosis can only do what you want hypnosis to do and what you open up for. And the problem with stress is that stress is not helpful if you want to tackle problems or challenges. And therefore we use hypnosis in order to support people to solve their problems by getting into the right state for problem solving and into the right state for learning, changing and growing. Yeah, I do uh, self-hypnosis every evening before I go to sleep. Hypnosis works definitely for kids to fall asleep. I would like to change your final routine of the podcast just in this very special episode a tiny bit by um, having an invitation for you uh, to just close your eyes for a minute. I can assure you both that we never talked about that on the podcast. <laughs> I think that even the word hypnosis was one of the few words that never came to uh, to the podcast. Uh, it's really interesting for me, um, but because I like you're my 163rd podcast and I cover the wide range of topics like with sports, with mindset, with with uh, even health, with food, uh, with so many different topics outside of Bitcoin, of course, like all the Bitcoin topics we also covered. Uh, but this is an area where I'm like excited because it's something new and I always like when there's something new uh, on the table and there's something exciting uh, going on. So, uh, and uh, I think most people still have this uh, picture in their mind like, oh, hypnosis is like the stage hypnosis where someone is like flat and, and like th this kind of hypnosis. I don't know if you also do that, uh, but which is more interesting for me is like you also actually do hypnosis uh, for healing people, for helping them. Uh, and this is the thing that I'm actually interested in and I'm actually um, uh, way more. Uh, passionate about uh, because stage hypnosis is like a fun thing entertaining but uh, nothing, nothing really that excites me uh, except when it's funny to see um so uh maybe let's start with andreas uh what what, what is that and and and, and why are you you doing yeah. that it's basically the principle of hypnosis it's we make use of the nervous system in the human body there's uh, two main systems one is uh, to be excited with energy and uh, it makes you move and run very fast and there's the other system which can help you to relax and it's the cooperation of those two systems um, which makes our everyday life basically but from the fiat life and fiat mindset usually we are way too stressed to have a good and relaxed life and the problem with stress is that stress is not helpful if you want to tackle problems or challenges um, and therefore we use hypnosis in order to support people to solve their problems by getting into the right state for problem solving and into the right state for learning changing and growing Maybe um, uh, in order to understand better what it is, uh, it's also interesting to know what hypnosis not is because I think a lot of people have superstitions about it, have a, a picture about it, uh, what hypnosis is and what not, hypnosis not is because we, we see a lot of things, uh, especially with social media, especially with the stress and hectic world that, that, that we see each day. And there's like, oh, we see 10 seconds uh, a video of something and all of a sudden we have our opinion on that. Um, what is hypnosis not? Like, what, what is it not for? Yeah, the, the thing is that um, it starts super early, like uh, even in stories for children, like um, audiobooks or books for children, always like uh, often the bad guy is using hypnosis to make somebody do or feel whatever he or she would like to. And um, I think we're so framed to something negative when it comes to hypnosis. And at the same time, we're so open-minded and listening to everything that is said on advertisements and uh, all the jingles that we hear every day. And so open and without any, you know, um, protection against, against that, like uh, singing some jingles and having that all day in mind, which is also a kind of hypnosis that is used to make you buy the newest iPhone or the newest whatsoever. So... Um, Actually, hypnosis is a tool, a little bit like a, a knife, and you can use it for very good things, and you can use it like for not so good things. 
but uh, the, the thing is that it can only do whatever you like are open up to. So for example, you talked in the beginning, like on stage hypnosis and all of that is only working if people really would like to play the chicken or play the whatever on stage. If they don't want to do that, it wouldn't work. So hypnosis can only do what you want hypnosis to do and what you open up for. So actually, if, if there's any negative impact, it's something that you are open for and you want for like. So my for you to have uh, small mid-roll ad in the middle of the podcast with, with Bitbox is, uh, is even a form of hypnosis because I'm doing the same thing over and over and try to get people to, to, to buy a new Bitbox. Or is it like, uh, would that be a stretch? No, no, you're spot on. You're spot on. It, no, no, no. That's that's exactly the point. It is hypnosis, and it works for the people who are interested in having a good hardware device, with, which is open source and supported by the community. <laughs> no, um, yeah, it works for the people who are open on this channel, who want to know about this, and it won't work for somebody who just got himself a seat signer or jade box like whoever thinks no this is this need is already satisfied they will be not as success uh, successful or accessible to your to your advertisement is there um and this was the question that actually came up to my mind when i'm prepared for the question uh, for the uh, session today um what's the difference between a guided meditation and hypnosis because guided meditation for me is also like you go uh, um, relaxed you go deeper and you try to like also find your inner peace and find maybe something that's that's wrong with you um what is there like what is the difference uh, between those two so i would say that the guided me meditation is um is more open and it leaves more room for you whereas the guided hypnosis with us is more to uh, to uh, is more usable for problem solving or to to reach a certain goal whereas a, a guided meditation will always have open results um we are planning the results with our clients together to come to certain conclusions or to come to new ideas in a in a certain way so um our, i would say our approach is more like um more like a system and not as open yeah i love that and and this was this ties back to the the what you said in the earlier because when you have uh like hypnosis only works with people that actually want to do it uh, and when you before set goals and set what you actually want to accomplish with that, uh, it, it probably makes it easier and makes it uh, a better results uh, for for both of them. Um, really cool. Uh, is is that also? Um, do you only um, do stuff for overcoming problems and anxieties and addictions and and those kind of stuff? And then I think everyone has some addictions. I think everyone <laughs> has uh, has addictions. Some have really bad addictions and some have like small addictions. Uh, so there's like levels to it, but uh, even above that, can can hypnosis enhance uh, stuff? Definitely, like it's for you to decide how to use a tool. Do you want more some, from something, like more self confidence, or maybe more happiness? Um, do you want to be more calm? Do you want to have a better sleep? There are so many things we we could do and we could reach with hypnosis, so it can be a, it can go in two directions. It could be less from something or more from something. I saw that uh, you did an experiment with uh, Daniel Prince. I think he he shared a little bit about that on on the podcast. I unfortunately did not get to to listen to it. I I still have to do it. I just uh, saw uh, the the. How can you say it? Transcript of it. Um, can you share a little bit of of, of uh, as 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 much as <laughs> Daniel and and uh, he wants to share from it, but uh, uh, some of his experience and then how how he helped how you helped him. Yeah, definitely. So. Um, 
and usually we don't talk about like specific problems of our clients but uh, as Daniel already said it by himself in the podcast we are happy to just reiterate reiterate what he said so um, basically uh, Daniel had really strong hay fever and he was sneezing um, like maybe one maybe 100 times a day so to a point where it was really exhausting Uh, for him and uh, then we met in Ploching uh, you could say uh, by chance but maybe there are not so many chances <laughs> like uh, maybe there's a reason for everything uh, and we met him and he asked us uh, out of curiosity if we could help him and then we um, helped him with hypnosis to get rid of um, the sneezes and in the following days he was sneezing like um, once per day and only once so there was a reduction of sneezes by like 99%, which was very beneficial for him. Um, and also we didn't want to remove his ability to sneeze like entirely because sneezing is also very healthy for the body if it happens like on a not too frequent um, term, basically. And then he returned home, the sneezing came back, but um, then we had another session and the sneezing has been gone ever since. So um, that's why he was so impressed to have the podcast with us, because uh, he didn't think that was possible before, basically, without taking drugs or medicine. Mm, I love it a lot uh, that uh, that you can, you could have helped him and, and you actually do that. You also do uh, everything on a value for value basis, as I understood it. Uh, I think uh, from our last conversation, which is uh, really interesting that we don't set a price, we, we do it and then we see how much uh, it was worth. Do, do you have a good uh, experience with that? And, and why did you decide to, to do it with, with that kind of a model? The thing is that um, who are we to say if the customer or the client who comes to us was satisfied or not? So only the person who, who felt the difference afterwards can say if it was like what he or she wanted to have or not. And um, so it's better that this person can take the decision what like how high the value is of the session. I love it. Is it um, what I'm always interested in because I'm fascinated by uh, people actually listen to my podcast and actually do uh see the podcast for free and then they go ahead and see like oh i got really a, a lot of value out of the podcast and then they go ahead and actually just send something like they already got it they have no obligation to do it there's no personal connection like uh, with you there is even a personal connection so there's like um a little bit more of the feeling of an obligation a little bit more um, but even with people that have absolutely no obligation, because I don't even know them, <laughs> I couldn't even see, no, if I see them on the street, I would not know if they would watch the episode or not. They still give something. And, uh, the, the concept of value for value is, is, is for me a really fascinating one. And, uh, I don't know how, how much it is contributed to the Bitcoin, uh, but it seems like really uh, popular in the Bitcoin community. Uh, is that something that uh, you think will will be um, more mainstream when we come more to a Bitcoin standard? Uh, or is it something that just comes up uh, as a small niche thing? Or is it actually, uh, could, the, could the world be actually so uh, developed that we come to a world where like, I don't know, 40 or 40, 30% of uh, the prices are set by the customer? So what I think is the best about value for value is the time preference, uh, which means that if we want to have a stable business or a stable exchange, the value for value will always tend to be beneficial for both sides. So the party who gives the value is never giving more than they perceive it uh, as valuable. And the other party um, yet... I, I like that the customer sets the price um, because I um, I could after a while refuse people to offer my service to them if they always think oh like the price is too low and I set a lower price to to uh, to make the transaction more beneficial 
um, for myself. Uh, so with a selfish um, attitude, I think the, the model will not work. But with a selfish attitude, you also will not have long term uh, relationships and business relationships. And with the value for value model, every party is incentivized to um, to cooperate again. And this is what gives like long term bond and uh, bondings and long term value to this model. Yeah, and and I think um, what the basis on like why people don't believe like mostly people don't believe that this works is only a negative belief we have in the current system. Like um, there are many many negative beliefs that people are suffering from currently, and I think Bitcoin helps them to to overcome that slowly. But um, like when when I like I'm also giving meditation classes here like locally with uh, like no coiners or no bitcoiners, and people told me in the beginning you can't do that value for value it wouldn't work like people will not pay you and actually they do and it works so it's it's something I think we we could we could do like everybody could benefit from that it's just our negative belief um that we were told that people are bad that people are selfish that people are egoists and egoists in a, in a bad way and so it can't it can't be you know people can't be this way it can't be positive no way so um it's, it's super interesting like when you when you think about negative beliefs that we got through school through films through family um it's it's incredible you talk to people and you you see it right away like they throw their, your ne their negative beliefs on you uh no um free market free market would that would only be for like rich people it would make rich people richer richer companies richer and uh it will create monopolies and you know all those negative beliefs that they learned every day and their whole life that they were breathing in that air they, I say they, but it's actually we because like we're all part of this of the system, and even if it might change now, uh, you know there are so many things we have so deeply in us that sometimes uh, it just pops up and you think, okay, whoa, where does this come from? And then you realize, okay, this is what I actually learned in school, or what friends told me, or what everybody, every everybody, like something you hear here often in France is you can't do that. Because if everybody would do that, then the whole system would break up. You know, it will it will destroy the whole system. So it's crazy how how like how people are afraid that something could break the existing system. Very interesting. Yeah, and it's interesting <laughs> for me. Um, I have an I have an Indian girlfriend, uh, and 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 she. She made that experiment that in uh, my small town where I lived up, like there's not a lot of people. It's like a, a little bit far off a city. You need from my house to the next bus station, three kilometers. So it's a long way drive. To, you have to have a car. It's just with public transport not possible. And it's a really trusting uh, society there. Uh, and for example, we have small farmers who put their products out in a shelf and just, um, uh, um, I forgot the English word for it, just a casa, uh, something where you can put the, the cash in price tag. Uh, yourself. Like there, there, there are price tags to, to uh, all the um, uh, products, but basically you can get there and put the whole fridge in yourself, don't pay for anything, and maybe even take the money with it. Like it's not secure, there are no cameras, there's nothing. It's just um, a really trusting a society and, and she said to me that would be empty in in the in like two minutes uh, and it was really interesting for me because i also thought about um how a good monetary system might change uh, uh people behaviors when we have sound money and we have a, a base layer that everyone can trust and people don't have the feeling that they have been stolen from from the central banks and all, everything like that um, it actually is possible that we live in a more um, loving and caring uh, and not as stressful of a world. Uh, and we can see that a little bit with Swiss. I feel like the Swiss people are way more relaxed and way more, uh, um, yeah, way better in, in that than other people. Uh, when we have like in India, for example, I always see the story from a girlfriend. I was 
myself never there but she's like it's a lot of stress you go there it's noisy there are a lot of people it's a come and go uh, and so i think uh, money actually has a big influence in our incentive system and has a big influence in how we behave uh, before each other yeah definitely and what i would like to add is that um like hyper bitcoinization is not done yet we know every satoshi will gain even more and more value um over time but already with the um with the bitcoin i i am able to enjoy the richness of life already like i i might not enjoy the final purchasing power but i have time to enjoy the life as it is currently and there's a feeling of wealth already because i'm not as worried about the future and i don't think things get worse but they get even better so i'm relaxed in the here and now i can focus in the here and now and what i would like to add for the value for value model is that in the value for value even the plebs surprised me um, in what value they see in um, our service because they paid more than I would have expected in my dreams, basically. So I felt almost overpaid. I, I felt like, wow, this is like incredible that in a short amount of time I can offer so much um, to the people. And this is why we will also do more marketing now because we get the feedback from the plebs that there is value in our work and uh, so let's bring it to the market let's increase the value for everyone why did you decide uh, i mean obviously there's something that uh, you can do with all kinds of uh, uh, um, uh, markets and and i feel like even bitcoiners are uh, way more healthy and have a way better um, feeling uh, to each other than uh, the average guy has um why did you choose to be in bitcoin and in the bitcoin community with, with yeah something that you can basically do with with every person he, he doesn't have to have bitcoin for that that's true but um, at the same time we made the experience that in fiat <laughs> basically in fiat we lack the studies from important and re well-known universities to prove that the concept is working because we are working on a subjective and individual level. So we don't have high-class studies, peer-reviewed, double, triple, quadruple times to prove that uh, our concept is working and we're not even willing to invest the money to have th those studies done. And in the Bitcoin space, people tend to... Um, to verify for themselves what works and what doesn't work. And with the value for value, they don't even have any risk um, in, in the model. So um, just the business works better in the Bitcoin space. And at the same time, to support our fellow plebs is, I think, the best we can do because this strengthens the ecosystem and it's helpful for and beneficial for every one of us. Yeah, but we also offer service in fiat, but in fiat, we don't offer it value for value. We have fixed terms and conditions because in fiat, everything needs to be fixed. <laughs> so even you make a uh, differentiation if someone pays uh, in, in, in Bitcoin and someone pays in fiat, this is really interesting to hear. Yeah. What I wanted to add is like, um, if there is a, if someone uh, wants to uh, convince me of something and they are then saying, oh, there's this study and this is that, this always makes me really, really, really careful. Like if, if someone goes ahead and explains something with a study has done, I'm really careful because I know all of these studies someone has to pay for and that someone has had an incentive for some outcome of the study. I'm not saying every study is, uh, is manipulated, but I'm just saying that studies um, have a financial incentive usually like if i have a product and i want to prove something i can uh, give a study in in uh, in order and they can prove my point i might be right about the point and just want to have the study done uh, in a, in a good way but maybe i also say like oh this this is the outcome of the study and if this is not the outcome of the study I will not publish it. Uh, please, I want to have something published. Or there's like this abstract thing. 
um, when we saw like oh, there's like uh, twenty thousand different abstracts, but then only I don't know five thousand of them made it to the final thing, and then they're saying like ah, ninety-seven uh, uh, percent of all scientists uh, said this is correct, but they left out seventy-five uh, percent of all scientists and all opinions. It's it's. Uh, I hope we come back to the world where we actually just uh, go in deeper and go in uh, trusting ourselves and verifying ourselves and, and being in, in, in self-control about uh, researching and about marketing. And yeah, as, as, as we tied back also before when, when marketing is hypnosis, um, we have to be more critical thinkers and, and think like, oh, is that is that actually uh, something I want to buy or do I just buy it because they put uh, 20,000 ads on me the last year? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and what what I wanted to add to um, why why Bitcoin is why plebs, um, I have the feeling that currently like a lot of things are changing in this world, and that Bitcoin is like uh, has a huge impact on that, and is like a base layer for those changes. And um, if we consider ourselves as a social layer of those changes, it would be really nice if we could get rid of all those, like, this fear dust we have on us currently. Like, all those beliefs we were talking about earlier, like, there, even even for people who are in Bitcoin, I, I can imagine that they still have some, you know, deep inside themselves, some fiat beliefs that are still there. Something like, um, I have to be this and that way to be beautiful, or... Um, yeah, I have to do this and that to be loved or I cannot love myself because uh, self-loving is egoistic are some of those uh, things we, we hear and um, we learned. So uh, plus still, like even if you are a Bitcoin, it might be that you are in a, in a family where you have to con convince everybody to, you know, that you have always be to, you know, to be maybe feel a bit lonely in your closer surroundings, and so it's it's really good to have some some tools to strengthen yourself and to protect yourself from, yeah, those negative beliefs that are somehow thrown on you or like uh, you are confronted with all the time. So yeah, strengthen strengthen the community is a is a good a good task actually. And I. Um... I started that and I'm not consistent with that. Uh, but for me, I had a problem of like just sitting down and relaxing and have a meditation. I know the, the benefits of that. Uh, I got to now do it when I walk. I can like walk an hour without headphones, without podcasts, without music, without that. And this is the time where I'm like really... And just for me, because the, the, the time when I'm uh, on my computer and, and phone, it's, it's these days, it's like there's a lot coming in, especially if you have um, a little bit more viral videos like the Michael Saylor one. There are all of a sudden 50 people in your DMs that want to do something. They want to be on the podcast. They want to sponsor the podcast. They want to do something. Like, there are a lot of things uh, and, and, and impressions coming in. Uh, and what I've found is like is everyone has to find his this way of finding uh, calmness because it's okay if, if sometimes it's a little more stressier, sometimes there's a little bit more of, of inputs coming in than, uh, than you actually could handle. Uh, this is also something, I don't know, and, and I see in the Bitcoin uh, world sometimes also this, maybe that's not the, the, the most popular opinion that I have right now, but um, when we are in the Bitcoin world uh, and people say like, oh, but you have to have a low time preference. They take this thing of a low time preference sometimes as an excuse to not work <laughs> and be lazy. And it's okay to be lazy. It's okay to be relaxed sometimes. But I feel like I, I, sometimes I have the feeling, oh, yes, I, I take a low time preference and now I watch four hours of Netflix. And, and don't get me wrong, like sometimes it's okay to relax. Sometimes it's okay to, to watch four hours of Netflix. But if you do it every day, your time preference is actually not low, it's actually high because you value your time right now. And if you instead would work out, uh, do something productive or something else, you could actually lower your time reference with that and work for your future self more. So I, uh, that's, that's kind of my, my thoughts that came into mind when, when, we, when we talked about that. 
um, yeah. But before we uh, get in other things, I, I wanted to get to know how how you both actually found your way uh, in, in Bitcoin. Uh, yeah, maybe start with Marie. Yeah, actually, uh, my way to Bitcoin is sitting to your right or to your left. I don't know from which perspective you see it. <laughs> but um, yeah, so um, I heard about it in, um, already during my studies, like in uh, 2009 already. But um, it was so far away and I didn't understand anything from it. It was like, okay, something really obscure and like strange and I didn't get it. And it seems to be like only for, yeah people being totally into informatics and stuff and so i ignored it for a long time again and then um like 10 years later um andreas showed up again with this uh subject like okay you have to study that and you really have to study that and look at that and maybe uh maybe you can watch the human video code together and you can understand that it's not only for like really crazy people but for people like you and me and so we watched this and um i was like okay crazy And then um, I really liked um, like the Bitcoin Lesestunde, which is um, a German podcast um, from Apico Media, which is really, really nice, where actually uh, articles from like very different sources are translated. And so I, I like listened to it during like when I drove my car and when I had time to do that. And it's so, so interesting. Everything I learned, made, like it feels so, so really right. Like for the first time you listen to something and it's like, wow it's so beautiful people thought it through they really thought it through okay maybe maybe this couldn't work or this like this could be an issue and then you you come to another source and explaining everything in detail and you're like cool even this aspect was thought through and so it's it's so heartwarming actually for me to see something that was made with so much love and so many good intents and so much Mm, I don't know, like the, the first time we met afterwards, uh, Andres and me, I felt like I was uh, like walking on clouds, you know, it felt so, whoa, this is really something that would change society, uh, especially when um, like you had the feeling long time ago that um, everything goes wrong somehow in the society. And suddenly there is something you can build on and you can, you know, trust on, even if we don't trust and we verify, but when you verify, you realize you can trust. So it's like, Really, really nice, really good, good, good feeling. Brought, brought me into a big uh, orange bubble that I really like. <laughs> Thank you. You already made it halfway through the video and I'm really, really grateful to have you here. Two things make this channel possible. You as a watcher and listener who keep supporting this channel. And another one is all the Bitcoin brands that I partner up with, like 21Bitcoin, who support me from the very start and where I personally buy my Bitcoin from. With Code Robin, you even get a discount when you buy Bitcoin with them. And now also Bitbox. Bitbox is the simplest and securest way to secure your Bitcoin. And I heard a crazy statistics. Only 2% of Bitcoiners hold their Bitcoin in a hardware wallet. How crazy is that? Don't be in that 98% bracket. Be in the 2% bracket. And if you have self-custody and you know your friend does not have, maybe he needs a Christmas present. Maybe he needs a birthday present. And a small life hack, if you use code ROBIN, you get 5% off your order plus you support my channel. And now let's get back to the video. I sometimes feel like if it's if it's only us because we're early or if it actually could have a long term impact on on society and I think uh, later is the is the case so we we actually have a a long term impact a positive impact when we we change out the fundament uh, of 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 our money Andreas how was it for you Yeah so um I I was aware of bitcoin since 2014 but um i uh, it took me almost seven years to really understand and to have this final moment where everything came together and um i remember in the human bee doku when um i watched it and gigi said well only the crazy people think that bitcoin is a safe bet and i belong to those crazy people and i thought oh yeah and now i do too <laughs> and i was reading the book uh, the bitcoin standard in uh, two and a half days and i was listening to the first 20 episodes of the 21 po um, podcast 
um, at the same time. So this was really an intense uh, experience to fall down the, the rabbit hole. But um, yeah, I didn't want to exit ever since it goes on and on and on. And I love it because it, uh, yeah, it brings back purpose in life and goals and actual means um, of achieving something. Do you think we still are, are crazy? I think it's good. Yeah, but to in a good way. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I also think that the yeah, crazy like when, is good. If, uh, and also, it's. Yeah, the thing is that sometimes people pretend to be normal. No, and what's continue. normal? Ah, sorry. Yeah, it's, you know, and uh, I, I don't like this. When, when people start to say, okay, this has to be like that, and this is normal, and it's not normal that this is like that. That's such a strange kind of, like, of argumentation. And um, often I hear from people, like even before Bitcoin, that I was like crazy. So I totally accept that. It's okay. It's fine. Fits good. <laughs> Please also, Andreas, I think I, I, I think we, we have a little lag in there. And after the podcast, we will not be in there. So uh, let's see how, how it will be for, for the viewers. Uh, so I think that I, because of the lag, I interrupted you. <laughs> No, no worries. No, what I also wanted to say, it, it depends on the definition um, of crazy. So if an architect goes into an empty building and he sees how it will be and how everything will look like, or maybe he's just drawing it uh, on the paper, you could also claim that he's crazy because he's seeing and imagining things that are not right there this very moment. But it doesn't mean that those things won't be there in the near or long-term future. So I think um, if we say we are not crazy, but very creative, then it's a perfectly good trait to have. Uh, there's this amazing uh, um, quote from Einstein. Uh, he said, like, insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. Uh, and this also reminds me of, 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 of crazy. Like, we, we want, like, everyone in the fi financial system knows that the money somehow is bad. Like, depend, no, no matter in which political camp, no matter in what camp you are in, everyone kind of agrees the system we are having now is wrong. They are putting the... the um, the guilt of that on different people. They are putting the the um, the uh, the, mm. the fault of that on different institutions, but everyone kind of agrees like there is something wrong with it. And but still, everyone is like, oh no, it's working. Uh, we should not change too much. It's it's diff like it like it would be too difficult and it would be too risky to like have some new financial system like Bitcoin. And then it's like, okay, you, you recognize that there's something wrong, but you don't want to do anything else. So you want different results with doing the same thing over and over. So I think actually we are not the crazy people. <laughs> we, we are the people just that think critical and actually think for ourselves. And this is something that's just not, uh, what the average person does not do. So it's not normal in a sense of like, I think normal, uh, most people, when they say normal, they meant to say the average guy or girl is doing that. Uh, and if we're talking about the average uh, guy or girl, that's that's fine, but it, that's not normal. Like that, just because everyone does it, uh, it's, it's not something uh, good. My mom always used to say, uh, uh, if everyone jumps from the bridge, will you also jump from the bridge, Robin? And because I had this argument, oh, but everyone did it. And <laughs> so like, uh, that's, that's how, how I see it. And insanity is, is, is something that uh, most people have because they do the same thing over and over and try like, ah, I want to have this, I want to have this, but they're not doing anything for that. Yeah. And you just mentioned uh, at least two um, aspects that are so like like things we learned in our in this uh, current system guilt finger pointing um you know all those all those things that maybe we can overcome that at one point because guilt is like leading leading to nothing like how, what does it make me to to feel guilty um can i innovate can i change something if i feel guilty no no i'm i'm like uh 
I'm forced to stay like uh, in a state of um, where, where I can't move, where I'm, you know, uh, I'm bound to something. And so, so guilt is super useless, actually. And, um, and, and this is, but this is something we're always searching for. Like when you, you ask somebody, even, even a question that is not, not really about, uh, who's like, whose fault it was or whatsoever, just, uh, how can I do this? And they're like, oh yeah, that this is not working. is actually not my fault. And they're like, yeah, well, this was not at all the point. I just wanted to know how it, how it could work, you know? And we, we're, we're so like, there's so many reflexes that we have, which is, okay, it's not me. I step back. I'm first, I'm, I'm checking around me who I can point the finger on. And um, those, those like reflexes is also something I, I think as a society, we can work on that and we can rid, rid of that because who cares, you know, who cares whose fault it was. It, I mean, we, we should go forward. We should make things better. So maybe we should point fingers on who can help and who can innovate and who can make it better uh, instead of looking into the past. Do you think also that uh, this is the same thing that you talked about when you talked about the social layer? I hear that a lot. I never covered it on the podcast, actually. Uh, the social layer of Bitcoin. Uh, there are a lot of aspects to it. I talked with Danny in, in Bitcoin Prague about it, that uh, Bitcoiners are projecting their values onto Bitcoin and then expect that every Bitcoiner has those values. For example, when we come to food, there are a lot of carnivores in the Bitcoin community and they're like, oh, everyone has to eat meat. There, there cannot be any vegans, but there are a lot of vegans in the Bitcoin community. Uh, and, and it's like, just because you only eat meat does not mean that everyone has to eat meat in the Bitcoin community. Um, how, do you, how do you assess right now the, 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 the social layer of, of, of Bitcoin and what, it's, what is that for you? Andreas, would you like to start? So for me, it's the people who are having the consent that um, there, like there's value in the world and we can measure it with Bitcoin. That is the consent we are agreeing on uh, right now. And I think all the other aspects are secondary because um, everyone has intentions and everybody, everyone is acting um, in order to achieve whatever they want to achieve. And I'm not here to judge. Um, I just think the core value is um, we can exchange value and we can help each other. And this is the very fundamental thing um, for me, the aspect of cooperation. This is the social layer um, of Bitcoin. And I don't care how people design their life um, despite that, but I want to see how I can cooperate with them for more value in the market for a better life for everyone basically yeah beautiful I, I also i also think that um it's all around value like if, if the money that you have has value then you tend to save it and if you realize that your body has value you may want to save it also if you realize that love is a value you can share then maybe this is something you want to save or you want to spread or you want to share, you know? So um, maybe this is a common ground. If we, we realize what has value and what is like super flu, then we can also just have like, just agree to that. And, and then it doesn't matter if you think that meat or or vegetables or whatsoever is good for your body. If you care for your body, this is the best you can do for the community. If you care for yourself, it's the best you can do for everybody. If you love yourself, it's the best you can do. Because only when you do that, you can spread it. And only if you have good energy in you, you can spread the good energy to everybody. So who cares how you get this energy? If it's good for you, it might be like, it's good for others. Yeah, I like the points a, a lot. Um, I have one more question uh, that I forgot to ask uh, when we, we talked about hypnosis. Um, what do you think of uh, self-hypnosis? Is that a, a thing that is, is possible? Because I feel like it's it's like a lot of things is guided and you have to have a set of goals, but is self-hypnosis something that's achievable? Yeah, 
Yeah, definitely. D just this morning, I um, told Marie, um, I recorded a session with a client um, and I was giving suggestions about uh, alleviating arm. So it's just like a subconscious signal that something is happening. And I was uh, walking outside in the park and I was hearing to my own hypnosis and all of a sudden my arm started <laughs> levitating. And of course, I consciously knew why it was happening, but still it was like a surprise for me. And people looked to me as if I'm crazy because my arm was... Um, was lifted up while I was walking uh, all the <laughs> all the time, but I knew about the the process and it was great. And actually, I do a self hypnosis every evening before I go to sleep um, for like half an hour. And you can also call it meditation, but it's half an hour of contemplation about my goals, uh, my day, my life um, before I then go to sleep, basically. Yeah. And I think it also uh, helps you to overcome uh, lacks. For example, like um, imagine you're in a situation, you have to talk to people. You have to talk to people and you're a little bit nervous and you, ah, yeah, you, you don't know, like you, you felt a little bit. And then suddenly you feel that your voice is like, maybe you talk like a raven because you don't have any voice anymore and you're really afraid that, okay, now I have to talk to many, many people and I don't have my voice anymore. And then you think about something like you drink honey and milk, like warm honey and milk. And this is such a cozy feeling. And maybe uh, you have some associations with that, like sitting at your granny's table or somewhere from your childhood, sitting somewhere where you feel good and uh, loved. And now you're drinking that. And it's such a nice feeling in your, in your throat, you know? when the milk and the honey goes down your throat and it's like, ah, oh, giving you such a nice voice and give, make you feel so comfy and so nice. And then with this good feeling, you can go out and talk to people. So I think our brain is so complex and we can do so many things and everything that you already felt in the past, you can maybe feel it again only when you think about it. So maybe you already had a really good massage. That was so nice and it was so good. And now imagine you just have it right now. Why not? Why not thinking that uh, at this very moment, there's somebody behind me and giving me a really nice massage on my shoulders and suddenly, mm, well, that feels very good. You know, I feel relaxed. That's good. And maybe now um, I would like to have this feeling, but more intense or less intense. Or maybe I would want to have this feeling on my shoulders but on my neck or somebody somewhere else you know and it's just it just feels good and maybe we can do that to ourselves and we can learn how to to do that i mean this is what i meant earlier with with the lack we we apparently there's nobody behind me i mean you have to tell me but i don't think that there's somebody behind me giving me a massage but maybe i can just feel it and i think about it and i want to really feel that You know, maybe I confused you not totally. That's fine too. That's part of the strategy. But uh, <laughs> but I think there are many, many things that are possible and we can just learn how to do that. I just thought about uh, the Michael Saylor interview because he has this famous thing that he always does when he goes on a rant. He's like... <sighs> The, the, this thing. And I feel like it's almost like... An, uh, <laughs> It's, it's it's almost like an uh a, a trigger for him to like okay i got the question and I'm like now i get going with, with with my 30 minutes rant uh and it's uh <laughs> i just thought about that because i think a lot of people like when they talk about public speakers that are used to speaking a lot they have like their routines like tony robinson has this thing where he like jumps up and then turns around like he has this physical thing that he always does in front of the right before he goes on stage and then he goes on with a lot of energy so that that's like uh, i really like to have like those those triggers uh, and uh, i see also that there's a lot of negative triggers in in your life like uh, when you're like because i had had that uh, uh, when i came home and it was a long day uh, and and i was feeling uh, too stressed and i could not sleep i always had this feeling like oh i now i eat a lot 
And I had ne never a problem with that because I trained so much. So I, I was never fat or something like that. Uh, but I still eat a lot and then I could not sleep nice. And then uh, at some point I was like, oh, that's really bad behavior. Like the the stress coming home late and then eating, this, this was the trigger for like then eating something. And then I actually worked on it. Okay, I come home. I don't have this trigger. I find something else to do. Uh, and then I go on and I just... I just I did not do it with hypnosis, but uh, I, with hypnosis it would be probably a, a faster, <laughs> faster way out of that. Uh, but uh, right now it's like no matter when I come home, no matter how stressed I am, like I, I can really nicely come down, relax, uh, and then go uh, about my day and uh, feel really good. And uh, I like that uh, we have in the Bitcoin space people that want to help each other, people that are actually uh, there for each other, and and I like that that you are doing it. Uh, professionally and you're actually helping people because this is also something I put it out now with a podcast uh, and maybe someone is in the audience and feels like, oh, I, I could I could use some help with, with that thing that I have and, and this is a, a thing that I net, did not try uh, and uh, this, is, this is something um, we all uh, are we all could benefit from when we help each other out. And this is the, the Bitcoin community in it in itself, like we helping each other out all the time. Um, because we are two people now, I want to start with the end routine a little bit earlier because we have like always two questions. And if, if I have four answers, I have to start a little bit early with the end routine. So we get, the, get it in the hour around that time. Um, the Android team uh, consists of two uh, uh, questions. The first question is always the same question for every guest. And then the last question is uh, from the previous guest, a question for, for, uh, for you both. Uh, and the first question is, um, what are you currently passionate about uh, besides Bitcoin and helping other Bitcoiners? So like, what are you passionate about besides what we are talked about right now in the podcast? Is there anything else that you're learning uh, or you're passionate about? Um, Whoever wants to go first. Uh, so for me right now, it's about becoming more agile again, uh, which means I'm uh, selling off my flat. I'm uh, making it empty piece by piece. And I, w I want to travel again and I want to meet Bitcoiners in all over the world. And this is something I did a lot uh, in my youth. And uh, now I want to do it again. And I'm, very much looking forward to it where are you do you have a, a target for traveling uh yeah so probably i will start uh, the travel off in thailand where i also have been before and it's a nice place people are really happy there and smiling um yeah looking forward amazing uh, tell me when you come by in, in vienna someday <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we'll do. <laughs> what about you, Maria? Yeah, uh, for me, it's currently um, everything that's creative. Like, I really like um, painting, music, like I'm playing the guitar, I'm singing. And um, currently, it's like uh, writing poems. So um, I'm, I'm walking around having some pieces uh, in my head and... Um, yeah, I just I just starting to started to put some stuff on on Twitter, but I really like to to play with words and I have some friends doing the same. And um, yeah, it's it's a really really nice thing. Like words can say so much. So it's uh, it's the same I with like music and colors. So, yeah. I use always music to to pump me up for workouts when I'm not when I'm not in the mood to it. <laughs> It's also kind of a trigger kind of a hypnosis. Um, perfect. And let's come to our end routine uh, of the podcast where the previous guest is asking a question for the next guest. Uh, and the question is a really interesting one. Uh, uh, what is the question that you have never been asked, but you always wish to be asked? <laughs> so, uh, as, as, so like, what is the question that you want to answer and what's the answer to that? Who, who wants to start with that one? <laughs> yeah, uh, I want to start. Actually, I think Actually, I really um, have to think I'm about this by because with it's young so... Kids. And um, I always like I wanted to show them 
how um, how they can maybe help the kids to consciously because uh, this is something I'm I'm doing like with my own daughter. She's two years now, and of course sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, and you have to change your way quite often. But uh, kind of uh, hypnosis works definitely for kids to fall asleep. And um, currently, like I'm on a stage where I'm just holding her hand, and I try to like give her my energy and to slow down a little bit the rhythm of her heart and to you know slow down the pace and just make her more and more relaxed that at one point she can fall asleep and actually this is something i really would like to teach parents but i didn't find yet a way to like a setup a setup how i can do that because kids like kids behavior and kids uh feelings are so random you know even uh, like there's no time where all the kids are sleeping at the same time even like maybe at night but then again they won't go to to a course you know nobody will come with a kid at, at eight with uh like taking the kids to a course at eight uh and making them fall asleep and i cannot be uh, next to the beds of people like trying to help them so i, I have to i have to figure out how, how i can do that but uh, i really would love to help people parents I love it. I love it a lot. Uh, yeah. Andreas. Yeah. So, um, I think the, the, the best, the best question to the, no, the best answer to the question I have never been asked, but would like to be asked is it's you, you is the answer for, for everything because it's your life, it's your universe. You decide so many things that you're not even aware of. So whatever is the question, in the end of the day, you decide what the answer is. I love that. It's uh, uh, definitely out of the box thinking. Uh, I, I love that. Sometimes with Bitcoin, especially with, with the finance podcasting, uh, because even in Bitcoin, there are a lot of, um, like there's like 80, 90% of like financial people in there, uh, that are really focused on how Bitcoin will evolve the financial system. But then there's always this, like once a week or every, tw every uh, second week, I have this, uh, a little bit out of bound uh, podcast and I love that. And, and people get, uh, always have amazing uh, feedback around that. Usually a little less views. Let's see how, how this goes. Uh, maybe I can make a good thumbnail, uh, but uh, usually it's a little bit uh, less views, but way more engagement, way more comments, way more like, uh, like oh, this is was really good, and uh, I, I like those kind of sessions. And thank you, Andreas. Thank you, Maria, for for being on. Uh, last questions: When people actually want to take your service, when people want to ask you questions, when people want to reach out to you, uh, where can they find you? So I think the easiest way is to contact us uh, via Twitter. It's uh, at pleb underscore coach. Um, that's the account. And also, uh, I would like that you might link us in the show notes so people can find us right here. That would be very kind. Um, which also brings me to the point, I would like to change your final routine of the podcast just in this very special episode a tiny bit by um, having an invitation for you uh, to just close your eyes for a minute maybe and relax a little bit because um, if that's possible for you, then I would like uh, yeah, to have some interactive thingy here. Could we do that? I thought about that and I thought about if we maybe even do a special episode around that uh, because now it's like end of the podcast uh, and, okay. and it would be interesting to maybe even set something up with a part two uh and uh, make an actual uh, -huh. uh small episode around that and then link it to that so uh that's like uh because i i would like to to uh have this in separate things if this is okay for you of course perfect no then, this is uh, this is great i, I yeah, love then, it great. then then yeah. we then we have uh, uh an, an another round uh because i would love always to like do a second round and i think now we talked about the the theories around that we talked a lot about uh, the things that how can it be uh, and then we can make a second round with an actual um objective of that and as you also said like uh, it hypnosis is more like uh, 
um, better when you both know before you go in like what what we are doing and i think if we have like a s small mm -hmm. pre uh, talk and then actually do it uh, recorded that could be really interesting uh, for people to watch and then we have like an actual example and i'm a really open guy so i'm sharing almost everything <laughs> online uh, and i think that uh, that would be that would be perfect uh, for for the three of us okay. perfect yeah great then uh if if you see this episode later uh, maybe it's already online then i will uh, link it somewhere here i don't know <laughs> uh and uh then uh thank you for for being on and thank you everyone for watching and listening i'll be back tomorrow with another episode bye bye